bro looking like a menace. Just look at that smile. It's hard to believe that there's only one more episode to go of House of the Dragon Season 2 before we're going to have another long break until we get Season 3, which we are going to get, thankfully. But anyways, to get into this episode, we start off with Adam looking like a just a menace here, smiling with his dragon, uh, Sea Smoke, I think it was, you know, the white dragon. And Rhaenyra is like, man, you know, and Rhaenyra, I mean, she has some 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 balls on her. I mean, she goes out here, or Sabuba, okay, she goes out here and confronts him on this beach. He's got this dragon. Her dragon ain't much bigger, okay? Like, and and we she had no idea if she could trust this guy. She had no idea who this guy even is. And then of course, you know, we find she finds out, oh, this is guy works for Corliss. Corliss is like, oh shit, like that was my bastard son, you know. And everything goes fine afterwards. Um, you know, we also got the scene um, with uh, well, we got Allison here looking all depressed. We also hear this dude he's telling the clubfoot about Adam, and for some reason the clubfoot doesn't believe it. That's hard to believe because I'm pretty sure the clubfoot is a green seer. He can warg and stuff. He knows what's going on. I think he just doesn't want um, <clears throat> he doesn't want the king, protector of the realm, Mister one eye to know what's going on right now because he knows that Eamon cannot be trusted. He knows that Eamon, you know, could use this information to his advantage. And he doesn't, even though like the greens, it's all one side still, he doesn't want him to be too powerful. So he's keeping the information for Mr. One eye for now. But, um, we do get a little bit more action from Eamon later in the episode. But, you know, we also get to this more council scenes. There's not a lot of action in this episode. A lot more, you know, um, you know, just, just politics and stuff like that. There's the scene with Coralist confronts Adam. And he tells Adam, like, hey, uh, like, we don't ride dragons. We're Valerians. We don't, we're Valerians. Like, we don't ride dragons. So your mom must have been Targaryen. So I guess Corlys, you know, he just be getting it on with Targaryen women. Like, you know, even even when he does, he doesn't even know he's getting on with a Targaryen woman. He's getting on with a Car- Targaryen woman. He's just a Targaryen slayer because even his bastard sons are, are part Targaryen. They, they can ride dragons. So that's pretty crazy. Uh, we got Damon here being an asshole to the kid who now, you know, inherited the Riverlands. And, uh, you know, they have like this epic meeting. This kid kind of like stands up to Damon. You can tell Damon wants to like kill this kid. But this kid actually does a very good job. He's like, I think he's only supposed to be like 14. And he unites all these leaders of the Riverlands behind Rhaenyra. And they throw the guy under the bus. The, I think it was the, the Blackwood guy who was killing the Brackens or whatever. Or maybe I get I get them confused, the Blackens and the Brackwoods. And, and Damon cuts his head off. And it's kind, it's kind of a little silly because it's like everybody knows that this dude only did it because Damon told him. But they're all fine with it as long as Damon cuts his head off. Like what? He was just, you know... I know he's responsible, but should, the, the anger should still mostly be at Damon. Like, I, I don't know how this fixes it, but okay, guys, whatever. Uh, but then, you know, Damon's still tripping out with, uh, you know, seeing his brother on the bed. You know, that's pretty wild. Jace, uh, you know, walks out of a meeting with Rhaenyra looking all menacing here because he's pissed that she's letting bastards ride dragons. You know, apparently Jace is very... Uh, you know, he's a self-hating bastard and he doesn't want other bastards riding dragons because then he feels it'll hurt his claim to the throne. It's like, okay, bro, like we got to win this war and your dragon's tiny, you can't do shit. So shut the fuck up. Um, and then, you know, we see some of the guys that she gets, the bastards. We got Ulf here, who the guy who said he was the son of Balon, you know, the cousin of Viserys and Daemon. Turns out this dude was a lion. He wasn't even sure. I mean, he even thought he was lying the whole time. And the boys, like, kind of talk him in. They're like, come on, bro. Like you said, you know, you were Targaryen this whole time. Go try out. See if you can ride a dragon. Rhaenyra's doing dragon tryouts at Dragonstone. So he decides to go. The Hugh guy also decides to go tells his wife um, that, you know, his mother was Targaryen, worked in a brothel or something. I know if his mother was a Targaryen bastard herself. It's really hard to say there. I'm sure the people that are more familiar with the books understand that uh, a little bit more. We also have Allison going in the woods, kind of weird stuff there. Um, we also got the, uh, the, the Dragon Keeper guys being racist. They're like, we don't want these bastards, you know, riding dragons. So they walk out. So Rhaenyra has to do the whole tryout by herself really with her Kingsguard 
we get to see the giant ass dragon. I forget the name of the dragon, but it's like the second biggest in the realm uh, behind Vagar. And pretty much everybody gets eaten. Like this is the action of the episode. Everybody gets eaten by this dragon. It is horrifying stuff. I mean, it is brutal. You see, you know, people just getting chomped, um, cremated. But then Hugh's the last guy, and of course, it chooses Hugh. And then uh, Ulf just runs into a cavern. Oh, isn't that nice? Oh, the dragon, oh, look at all sweet after it just murdered like 100 people. Oh, so cute. And yeah, Ulf runs into a cave, and then he runs into the other dragon, which honestly kind of looks scarier. And that dragon accepts him, even though he kind of like stepped on one of the eggs. Like, okay. Uh, then, you know, we got Mr. <clears throat> Aim in one eye here. He looks out the window. He sees an, a dragon. It's freaking Ulf on the dragon. <laughs> Just having a good time riding the dragon. He goes out there, confront him. Ulf, uh, you know, runs away to Dragonstone, which I don't know if Dragonstone and King's Landing are supposed to be this damn close. Like, it's like they're right next to each other. Like, I'm pretty sure it's more distance than that. Didn't it take Rhaenyra, like, five days to go there before? Like... I uh, know we're getting some like teleporting shit. It, it just they, it looks so close when Aemon's flying on Vagar. Just doesn't make a lot of sense how close uh, they they really are to get to to each other. But then he sees Dragonstone. Aemon sees Dragonstone. He backs off and he just got Rhaenyra here looking all badass with her dragons with their riders now behind her. And you know just hopefully nobody betrays her. Hopefully, huh? and, and uh, that was the episode. So yeah. That was a pretty crazy episode. It was kind of cool to see that, you know, Ulf was in troll the whole time. He really was a dragon rider, even though he wasn't sure. And Hugh was a dragon rider. So he seemed more confident in his belief that he was. So that's uh, pretty cool. Um, and yeah, like the fact that Balon um, had some bastard sons. That's, uh, well, had Hugh and then another Targaryen woman had Ulf. That's kind of just interesting for the Targaryen lore. And then the Adam thing is honestly more of a mystery because who the hell was his mother? Like Corliss didn't even know he hooked up with a Targaryen. Apparently somebody Corliss hooked up with had some strong Targaryen blood, which allows Adam to ride a dragon. And I think his brother, I think have the same mother, Alan. So yeah, that's, that's kind of interesting. You know, that, that's, that's really fascinating, but yeah, I just want to do a quick review here and, uh, you know, wherever you are, have a fantastic day and peace out.